What is often cited as the origin story of the ministry of deacons appears in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6. As the number of disciples continued to grow, the Greek-speaking Jewish Christians in Jerusalem complained that their widows were being neglected and the daily distribution of food to the neediest members of the community. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and proposed that seven reputable persons, filled with the spirit and wisdom, be appointed to this task. From the very beginning of the church, the ministry of deacons has always responded to pastoral needs in the ministries of liturgy, word, and charity. In the New Testament, the only person who is given the title deacon is Phoebe. St. Paul commends Phoebe to the church in Rome, calls her our sister, a benefactor, and a diakonos, a deacon of the church at Sencre. And St. Paul asks that the church in Rome receive her in the Lord. Origen, the third century Christian scholar, believed that this passage showed with apostolic authority that women were designated for the church's ministry and that Phoebe had been installed in this office. Meanwhile, the first letter to Timothy identifies the characteristics of women who are deacons, saying they must be dignified, temperate, and faithful in everything. Not only are women deacons referenced in Scripture, but for the first 11 centuries of the church's life, there were thousands of women who were called deacons while they exercised a wide range of ministries related to liturgy, word, and charity. Church historian Gary Macy describes the ministry of these women in the book Women Deacons, Past, Present, Future. These women baptized and anointed women, proclaimed the gospel, preached, taught catechism, assisted at the altar, administered finances, and cared for women on the margins. Here are a few icons of women who are recognized and celebrated by the church as both deacons and saints. Saint Phoebe, the deacon Saint Paul commends to the church in Rome, and Saint Tatiana of Rome, a third century martyr. We have Saint Justina of Padua, another third century martyr, and Saint Nona of Nazianzen, from the 4th century. We know of women who served as deacons through numerous references in letters, chronicles, pastoral manuals, legislative texts, and inscriptions. This Greek inscription, found on gray marble, is from 6th century Cappadocia. It's a simple and beautiful testimony to Maria the deacon. We also know of these women through ordination rites. This codex is from the 8th century and was used by Greek Byzantine bishops until the early Middle Ages. This ordination took place in the sanctuary during the Eucharistic liturgy. The bishop laid hands, invoked the Holy Spirit, and gave the woman a diaconal stole and chalice. This is an excerpt from the prayer for ordination, dedicating the woman to the diaconate as God granted the grace to Phoebe. With all this history, why aren't women ordained as deacons today? By the 12th century, priests consolidated power, assumed the duties of other ministers, and the diaconate became a transitional ministry for future priests rather than a lifelong vocation. And since women could not become priests, they could no longer be ordained as deacons. About 50 years ago, however, the diaconate was restored as a lifelong ministry and open to married men. In another video, I'll describe how this change came about and how the question of women as deacons has reemerged in the church's discernment today.